Good morning, family, Greater Corinth family, Facebook Live family. Welcome on another beautiful Sunday morning. God has blessed us with another opportunity to come and praise his name and worship and thank him for everything that he has done and ask his blessings over everything that we will do. So in this moment, let's clear our hearts and clear our minds and just give everything that we have to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey man, we're so glad that you all have joined us this morning. We're so excited that we, I, you know, I woke up this morning so excited about having another opportunity to worship God, having another opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with my brothers and sisters. And I just think that we are, in times like these, God has been so efficient. Even though we've been going through a rough time with COVID and with the social unrest, God is so efficient that he's not going to waste this opportunity. And so I implore us, let's use this as a chance to share the gospel with our brothers and sisters that are in need of the knowledge of a Savior. So as we move forward in this worship service, so excited that we have the chance uh, to welcome our, our sister, Reverend Liz Holmes, as we sing our song of celebration. It woke up this morning with my mind. Wherever you are today, praise with us. Yeah. Worship with us. Yeah. Clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Yeah. Stretch holy hands. Right. You're in your home. Yeah. What better place to worship God than in the place that you live that God has blessed you with. And so we want you to join together. Be a participant in this worship this morning. Yeah. All right. Amen. So let's go ahead to Reverend Liz. Praise the Lord, everybody, because God is great and he is greatly to be praised. So glad that he woke us up, started us on our way, and kept us in our right mind with the blood flowing through our bodies. Praise the Lord. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay. Chronicles 
chapter 16, verses 23 through 31. So once again, let me give you a chance to get there. First Chronicles 16, 23 through 31. I'm going to be reading from the NIV, but follow along in whatever version of the Bible you have. And it reads as thus. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Yeah. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all of the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them among the nations say, The Lord reigns. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come to you once again in worship and in praise. Father God, we are so grateful for your presence, not only in this worship service, but in our lives, Lord. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for rules of our head. We thank you for food on our tables, Lord. We thank you for the freedom to openly worship you, to openly say that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we feel your power and your presence even now. We lift up the, our pastor as he prepares to share with us what you have given to him. Father God, give him preaching power. Give him clarity, Lord. Let him recall everything that you planted in him and open up our hearts and our minds, Lord, so that we can receive your word and put it into action. Father God, we love you, we honor, and we adore you. And the saints of God join me in saying amen, amen, amen and amen. And now I bring to you our pastor, Stanley D. Sparrow, for his pastor's period. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Good morning, Greater Corinth. Good morning to all of those who are worshiping you with us yes. by uh, live stream. We thank God for your presence here this worship day. We know that uh, our stay at home here in San Antonio has been lifted, but it is strongly recommended that we stay home. In the city of San Antonio last week, there were more than 300 new infections in our city. And they anticipate, they're thinking that that was caused probably by Memorial Day weekend and the things that people did, going to the beaches and so forth. And not even now uh, looking at the impact of the protest marches that have taken place in the last 10 to 12 days. So to the church family, let's be cautious. Uh, let's wear our masks when we go out. As far as coming back here at the sanctuary, just hold tight. We will let you know when uh, the deacons and trustees, along with the ministers who are available, we're meeting here on Tuesday at noon, so we can start looking and to continue preparing and seeing how the seating will be. And um, just, just hold tight. I know we miss one another so much, uh, but we want to make sure that you are safe, that this environment is healthy for you, and uh, that everything would be okay. Amen? Amen. Amen. Also, I want you to continue to uh, pray for Sister Hopfield's family. Sister Hopfield transitioned early this morning at 3 a.m. And uh, let's keep her and her family in our prayer. She's Amen. at rest. Now let's pray for her family as they continue to go through this difficult moment. To all of our youth who are... Uh, uh, now, officially enjoying their summer vacation, uh, I know many, all of them went to their next grade, and uh, I think we're going to do something very soon to acknowledge who they are, 
but we want to give a, a, a hearty congratulations to uh, Nayla, who is our, who is our only high school senior. Yeah. So congratulations yeah. to Miss Nayla. Amen. Amen. I can see her. She's watching. She's just <laughs> blushing right now. But we thank God for her and her accomplishment. To her family, especially her mom, congratulations to you as well. It's a, it takes a lot to get a child through high school. Yes. Amen. So much temptations and things out yes. there, but we applaud you, her family, as well. As we know, this coming Friday is Juneteenth, and, and so therefore, in, in, in combination, uh, combining with the uh, media ministry and the youth, they are uh, uh, sponsoring kind of like a, a worship and praise of music and prayer time in front of the fellow of the Bellinger House, uh, starting around 6:30 this coming Friday evening. Only about an hour to have music, going to have some nice cool water for you. It's going to be on the outside, and they're in front of the Bellinger House. Amen. Amen. So I know that you, you haven't been on campus in a while. If you feel like you just want to take a ride, then that's up to you. Make sure you bring your mask. Amen. Yes. No mask, we're going to send you home. Amen. Amen. We thank all of you for continuing to send your tithes and offering to the church. We thank God for that. To all the ministries, as the deacons and, and uh, trustees that work with me to prepare to come back into the sanctuary, we need the ministries to also come and look at your areas. It's been about three months since we've been here. So we need you to really come back. Hospitality, the music ministry, youth, as well as the usher. Look at your areas and make sure things are in order. Amen? Amen. Also, in reference to music, unless something changes, uh, Brother John Harding, uh, many of you who have been here for a while know Brother John Harding. He will be coming back as our minister of music. So I've heard nothing but positive and wonderful things about Brother John Harding. And therefore, we look forward to him coming back. Amen. Amen. And again, to our ministerial staff, to our, our acting minister of music, Sister Pat Moore, and to all the ministers who are here, we thank God for your presence. And we do have a visitor with us. Amen. Uh, Dr. Margaret Bartner, glad to have you here with us this morning. And don't you out there, do not get an idea that you're going to sneak in here. She, um, she was in her Sunday school this morning. No, we're not ready for you to come back here. So we'll let her stay this time, but we'll kick her out after today. Amen. Let me be nice. God bless you. Good to have you here with us. Amen. Reverend Holmes is going to be this time.
unconditional, that your love knows no bounds, that your love knows no conditions. You love us no matter what. Father, remind us of that right now. Remind us. Free those who may be condemning themselves with guilt. Free those who may be harboring these inner hurts. Father, free them right now with your all-powerful love. It is the love that frees. It is the love of God that liberates us, Father. So just remind us of that right now. And once you remind us of that love, and once you remind us of the power of your love, Father, show us how to trust. Show us how to trust you. Show us what it means that even in our imperfections, especially in our imperfections, especially in the areas where we struggle, show us what it means to trust those things over to you. Not that we hide those things from you in shame, but we trust those things to you because you have shown us that you love us. Father, it's right now that we ask that, Father, just help us day in and day out, especially in these present times. The pandemic is still here and it's still going on. There is social unrest. There is questions. And the believer wants to know, what can I do? So, Father, with that, it shows first and foremost, remind us that we are your children. Remind us that we are to be shining lights in the world around us. Remind us that we are to be examples of your love and examples of your peace examples of your grace and examples of your justice, examples of your righteousness, that we are concerned with the cares of the people, that we are concerned with the cares of this world, but that concern ultimately goes to you because you love us. Because you love us. And because you will always love us. So Father, keep our minds focused on you. Keep our hearts ever turning to you because it is there that we have Solace. It is there that we have fortitude. It is there that we have strength. It is there that we have peace. Because you are our rock. Especially in times like these, you are our anchor. Yes. So, Father, it is in this moment that you can help all of us to hold true that you are the answer. You are the answer for everything. For a struggling world for the struggling individual, for the struggling family, the struggling city, the struggling community, the struggling church, you are the answer. Help us to remember our first love. Yes. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus, Lord, just Jesus, how I 
to trust him more. While Reverend Home was singing, my mind went back to the Old Testament, thinking about the life of Job. Job trusted God. They didn't have what we would use in our 21st century, talk about faith and, and, and the words that Paul had written about the just shall live by faith. But Job trusted God yes. to the point where his trust went beyond his personal belief. Yes. But Job realized that he had to cover his family. And even though he didn't know what his sons or his daughters may have done, may have done. But what he would do, Job would make sacrifices unto the Lord. Just in case his sons and daughters had sinned against God. What is, what is, what is that showing us? It, it is saying that if you trust in the Lord, yes. then you must stand on his promises. Yeah. And when he says, I bless you and your children and your children's children, yeah, you have to believe that. And Job will make sacrifices. And he, he wouldn't just make sacrifices. I, I like it because I know that in, today we like to say, my parents drove me to church. <laughs> And all of us, have, we, if you're at least 50 years, no, 60 years older, we all experience being drugged to church. But the word will say that, 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 that Joe will bring, will gather his children, and that Joe will make sacrifices, atonements unto the Lord, just in case. So look at where we are. We just following that with somebody in the Old Testament way before our time yes. that already figured out that even though they may not trust God the way I trust God, but it goes back to something that Grandma used to say. If, you, if, if you're depending on me for your livelihood, if you're living in my house, you're going to church. And therefore, Job was the rich man. Job had the possessions, and therefore, he took care of his family. And therefore, family, if you still want to well, enjoy the blessings that God has bestowed upon me, come on, let me drag you to church. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, let me be nice. Amen. So, so we got drugged to church. But look where we are. The foundation was put there. Because that's where, why we're where we are. Yeah. Now, I know they say they come to church and make them come to church and so forth, and, and they're not listening, they're not taking it. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yes, they are. Because, see, unless, unless you can hear and your mind is all of a sudden can't comprehend anything, it's going in. They may not like what's going in, but it's going in. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. So the trust in the Lord. To trust in the Lord. Okay, let, let, me, let me go to my text. Uh, a very familiar text, Romans the 11th chapter. One, just one verse. One that we've heard, you've heard me say many times, but I want to take it from a different perspective. And at Romans chapter 11, one verse, at verse number 34, when it says, who have, for who have known the mind of the Lord, or who have been his counselor? And I'm going to stop right there. Lord, be with us now as we pray for your word. Yes. Lead God and direct us. Send down the spirit of the preacher. Yes. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen, amen. and amen. David penned a particular song that says that, that the earth is the Lord's. And the Lord means that he has full power, authority, and he rules over the earth. The fullness thereof, which means its entirety, its wholeness, its completeness, 
The world and they that dwell therein, which means that he who is Lord over the earth, he who is Lord over the world, is Lord over everything that is in that world. Yes. And we know that David penned this long before Christ was born. We know that it was penned long after the first Adam had fallen from grace. Yes. So therefore the writer knew that the world that God had created in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, had changed because of sin. Yet this world that belongs to God continues in its perpetual existence as designed by its creator and its Lord. Which is saying to us that, that the master architect, the master designer, and the master builder still is in control. And when we get to know him, when we get to know this master architect, this master designer, this master builder, then we can fully understand the meaning of the song that we sing on many times in our church. It is well with my soul. Yeah. That regardless of what this world may go through, that he who designed it, he who built it, is still in control. Therefore, whatever comes in my world, it will be well with my soul. And there are times when, when God has to remind us because we get too caught up with what's going on in the world that we forget about the main and the fundamental thing that believers should always have a consciousness of, and that is that this world is not our friend. Amen, somebody. Amen. And number two, this world is not our home. So, so when you turn to Christ, you will find that this world is not your friend. When you love the Lord and commit yourself to your faith, you will find that this world is not your friend. If you go back in the Old Testament, I'm reminded of Daniel. Daniel, not only Daniel, but Daniel and the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the, the four of them had gained favor with the king. Mm -hmm. However, when you find favor with the Lord, when God is blessing you, when God puts you in a certain position, there will be people who will not like what the Lord has done in your life. And therefore, jealousy and envy and strife and all of these things will come up. But Daniel had been put in a very contagious situation and therefore they couldn't find anything that was wrong with Daniel. They were trying to find flaws in Daniel's life. So what they did was went to the king and had the king to make up this little decree concerning seeking after another God. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When you commit yourself to the Lord, it doesn't matter what others may do, what others may try to stop. Yes. As they say, when it took prayer out of the school, right. it didn't stop prayer from in our hearts. That's right. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And so they came up and the king made this decree and so forth and so on. But let me tell you about Daniel. Mm. Daniel went back to his house and continued to do what Daniel always had done. Yeah. He opened the windows of his house. Jerusalem and praying to his God. What am I saying? I'm saying to you, when you're committed to the Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care yeah. what rules or what laws or what policies come out. When you are committed to the Lord, nobody can stop you from praying to God and talking to your God. Yeah. Amen, somebody. So they did the plot and, and the king, and they came to the king and told him, but Daniel was still praying to his God. But let me tell you something. Right. In between the time that they were scheming, right. they had already had a relationship with the king. Right. Yeah. But yet the king couldn't go back on his decree. Right. And when they put Daniel in the lion's den, <laughs> before they went in, he said, Oh, Daniel, yeah. I pray, and I'm paraphrasing this, that the God that you yeah. serve yeah. will be able to deliver you oh, yeah. from the lion. That's the king. I keep telling you, if you if you do it God's way, you turn things around. 
kindness or unrighteousness. We don't know how long he will extend his mercy because there will come a time when his mercy will not endure forever. There will come a time when it's going to be cut off. All right. How long will it be? We don't, we don't know the mind of God. We don't know how long he will continue to stand at the door and knock. Yeah. Talking to you, telling you, come on in. Turn from your wicked ways. We don't know how long he's going to tolerate us. We don't know how, long, how many times we're going to have a second chance or a third chance or a fourth chance. Or you can keep naming it all the way up to a million. You don't know how long. But I will tell you what the word says. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. When he says enough is enough, it's over. You may say, but well, will, will God give up on me? I, I, I don't know. It's not for me to say. Who knows the mind of God? That's right. yeah. But he does talk about a, a reprobate mind yeah. for those who yeah. refuse to believe the truth. Yeah. When will he come to the point where he's saying, that's it for Job. I'm finished with Job. I'm finished with John. I'm finished with Barry. That's it. Let him go. And you may say, that's not a loving God. Mm. But see here again. That's why we love to say God is good all the time. The other time when God is not good when he's spanking us. There's no telling the times when your mom and dad or big mom, whoever, was spanking you, chastising you, and you was laughing and said, oh, that's so good. Kim, continue. Continue. Wait a God isn't good when he's spanking you. He loves you. That's why he's spanking you. Now you understand something. When our parents used to say, it hurts me more than it hurts you. Think about that loving God that when he has to chastise us yes. of what he feels because of what our disobedience is. So, so we don't know about a second and third chance. And, 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 and I'm reminded, uh, Grandma, you said you can lead a horse to water. But you can't make them drink. And Jesus is that living water. And so what am I saying to us here? Who knows the mind of God? We don't know the mind of God. And while we don't know the mind of God, we don't, while we don't know that master plan for each day, each week, each month, each year, while we don't know what will come on tomorrow, while we don't know how much Worse things will get. Why we don't know how many more valleys we may have to what, go through, how many more rivers we may have to cross. Why we don't know these things, we do know that God is with us. Mm. We don't know how many more tears we may have to cry. Yeah. That's right. yeah. We don't know how many more what sleepless nights we may have to endure. And we don't, even, we don't know the mind of God. We don't know. That's Why? Right. Why did he allow Job to go through what he went through? Job was a what righteous and upright man. Yeah. But yet God allowed it. But we do know his will towards his children. Yeah. David says that I once was young, but now I'm old. But I what, have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his what, seed man to bring. God has God has fed you. God has what, made a way out of no way. He yeah. said, many are the, what, the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of the mind. We don't know the mind of God, but we know his will. Yeah. His will is encapsulated here in a book that we call the Bible. Yeah. We know his will towards us. And, and there's no temptation. We know that he said there's no temptation that has befallen us that he has not already made the way for us to escape. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. even though you may have been overtaken, God has already made a way for you to get out of it. That's right. Why? Because you belong to him. Yes. Amen, somebody. And, and he says to us, that, and while we may not know the mind of God, yeah. while we may not even know what's going to happen in the next hour, while we may not know what will come on tomorrow, we do know this. That God will take care of us. Yes, he will. How do you know that, Spurl? Because I feel it on the inside yeah. 
And his word promises that. Yeah. We may not know what will happen on tomorrow, but we also know that God will never leave us nor forsake us. That means that even though you're walking through the valley, even though you have to cross the river, even though you may have sleepless nights, you have a God that's right there with you. Yes. I, I love Deacon uh, 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 lesson this morning concerning feeling lonely. When you know who God is, yes. when you understand that he's always there, doesn't matter what you go, what's going on around you in this world, you will never, ever be alone as long as Jesus is right there with you. Right. You can move to California. Yeah. You can move to Egypt. Yeah. You can move anywhere you want to move. Yeah. But as long as Jesus is on the inside, you are never alone. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to know the mind of God. You know, if he wanted us to know his mind, he would have given us that ability. That's right. And so while we may not ever know his mind concerning a certain thing, yeah. we do know this, that we remain faithful. Mm. There is a crown of righteousness yeah. Yeah. that awaits us. So, so, so we don't need to know God's mind. Don't, 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 don't worry yourself. Don't pluck your mind. Don't, 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 don't cause your brain to go into a, a, an overdrive or, or a short circuit trying to figure out what God is doing. Yeah. What we need is not to know his mind. Yeah. We need the love of God. Yes. And the love of God is Christ Jesus. Yes. That's all we need. Because when we have Jesus, Hallelujah. that's enough. That's enough. When we have Jesus, He's that comfort. He's that peace. When we have Jesus, He fixes what we can't fix. That's right. When we have Jesus, He solves what we can't solve. When we have Jesus. Even though we may be sick from the crown of our heads down to the soles of our feet, when we have Jesus, our bodies may be aching every day, every waking moment of the day. But as long as we have Jesus, right. we know that we have that master builder, yeah. that master architect, yeah. that he has built a what? A house for us, a mansion for us, not made with hands. Why? Because we don't know the mind of God, but we know the will of God because the will of God says if this earthly tabernacle be what? Destroyed. We have a building not made with hands. So I don't need to know the mind of God. I just need to hold on to the will of God, which says that, 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 that as long as I am faithful, I have a reward. Yeah. As long as I keep my hands to the gospel plow yeah. and don't yeah. look back, yeah. Yeah. I'll have a reward. Thank you, Lord. And that reward is eternal life with yeah. him. Yeah. So you all, you intelligent folks out there who's trying to dialect and analyze and yeah. figure out the mind of God, keep working on it. Yeah. All I want to do is stand firm, yeah. stand fast on the promises yeah. of God which are located in his will. Yes. It's called the New Testament. Yes. Therefore, don't worry about his mind. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you hold on to his will. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you and we magnify your name for all that you have done. Yes. Yes. We thank you for your word today. And Father, we pray those who are out there yes. trying to make ends meet trying to dot the I's and cross the T's, trying to do what they believe is the right thing to do. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to them. Yes. Let them know that you so love them yes. that you sent your only begotten Son. Yes. Speak to them, Father. Let them know that, Lord God, don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about what they may have done or what they should have done that they didn't do. But Lord God, let them open the doors of their heart yes. and allow you to come in and you
you will lead and guide them. And Father God, those who know you as Savior, let them continue to hold on to their faith. Regardless of what goes on in this world, let them stand fast. And as you say to us in your word, when we have done all to stand, let us still stand on the promises of God. So Lord, we thank you and we magnify your name for all that you have done. Be with us now. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Well, even at home, give a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Again, to our staff that's here, we thank God for you to Sister Fortier, our visitor, and to, uh, to those who are here, we thank God for what you are doing to bring this worship experience to the Corinth family and to all of those who are on uh, live stream who are enjoying the fellowship. To those who are not part of the Corinth family, if you want to know more about uh, Greater Corinth, go to our website yeah. and it's uh, gcbc-sa.org. That's gcbc-sa.org. And there you'll find info on the church uh, and what we're about, what we believe. Also, if, if uh, this ministry coming in the last, coming to you in the last three months has been a blessing to you, has encourages you, and we pray that if God is leading you to be a blessing to this branch of Zion, on that website, there's a way that you can do your online giving, and it, it is up and it's running, that you may uh, be a blessing to this ministry as we continue to spread God's word. For we love the Lord. Yeah. Not a perfect church, but a church that loves the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Amen. To the church family, as you go out and so forth, wear your mask. Be safe. Yes. Deacons, trustees, I'll see you here on this coming Tuesday at noon. Ministers who are free, who want to be part of that, can come out and be with us as we look at continuing the preparation to come back into the sanctuary. Pray to Corinth and to all of God's people. Continue to love one another. Continue to pray ye one for another. For yes. when you can love one another, then shall men know that ye are his disciples. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit yes. may rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of you in the name of the Father, Son, and the precious Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. 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 And may God bless you and have a blessed day.